Self-acceptance is the first key that unlocks the door, but then self-understanding is the next piece. So how do you, I mean, we get our students, most of the students we get, what do they say to you? You say, what is your diagnosis? And they'll tell you a word, and then you'll ask them, what does that mean? And they'll say, well, I have processing problems, or I have uh, social difficulty with socialization. But that's really about the length that they have. So if you had cancer, you know, you would go online and you'd look it up and see all the therapies and treatments for it and which doctors were best and you'd, you'd learn everything about it. But this is not a disease or a, or a death sentence. It's a learning difference, you know, whatever you are, ADD. It's just a different way of being in the world. And when students accept that, whether they like the word or not, that is attributed to them, when they, the, the key here is then to understand it. So that's what our program does in many cases with our students. They, they really don't know who they are. They don't know the sensory issues they have. They don't know the, the social issues that they have. They don't know the executive functioning issues they have and all the other things that go around that, the learning uh, styles, the way they approach their academics, et cetera. So they're just learning this, this word, but they don't know uh, how it really, how they can get control of it, sort of. So, um, because you can steer the ship, like I'm steering my ship now. Before that, I was on the, just floating around out there and didn't know what was going on. And I ran into problems periodically, all over the place, actually. And, uh, and I was in charge, so they couldn't fire me. So that helped. But basically, uh, they had to put up, they, I know they had these conversations behind the door, which was, that's just the way he is. It's, it's all, he's really harmless, you know. <laughs> and, but they were really putting up with my behavior, which was all over the place. And um, I didn't even know it. I was like clueless. So, the, uh, so as I started to do the curriculum here and work with people like Stephen Shore, Brenda Smith-Miles, Ami Klin, Carol Gray, all these people that are on our National Professional Advisory Board, I started to read their books, go to conferences, and understand for myself, and apply it to myself, and then build it into the curriculum. And so it's taken 10 years, but I mean, each year I seem to reach new heights of understanding. And, uh, and I have to say, if I have to put everything on a scale, the hardest part for me is in my personal relationships. That is the part, I mean, I, I, up here I look pretty much normal, probably even very proficient in many ways, because I've done this a whole lot over the last 10 years. But I still run into, and, and one of the stories I hope Michael will tell you is about the baptism, confirmation, first communion stories or whatever in, in his, with his girlfriend. And um, I, I have a lot of difficulty in knowing what to say and how much to say and what not to say. And, and being quick on my feet in responding in an emotional dialogue with another person. So I make big mistakes, so then I would, what, would, what I do in the past would be just shut up, and then they want a response, like you don't care enough to respond, or you, you're, not, you know, you're not being there for me, you're not, you know, you're not understanding me, you're not, all this stuff that you know, happens in relationships. And I would just not say anything because I knew I was going to say the wrong thing, usually. So that's the isolation that we go into when we keep making mistakes, which eventually can kill us, you know, some of us. So to get back to it, so why is it important that they understand their diagnosis? Because if they understand the sensory issues they have, if they understand the social issues they have, then they can, then they can have control of them and they can create new, new ways of being. And, uh, and they could fit in with the neurotypical people or the whatever you want to call them, the norm, you know, I don't call them normal, but the other group of people that's larger than us and <laughs> who rule, rule most things. And, uh, and so that, that's the biggest problem. And so our program, it's the philosophy of our program is that, you know, it's an inside game. You were made for good purpose. You're inherently valuable. You saw that over in the gallery on the wall. That's our motto. And, and it means that you weren't, you're, you're not disabled, you're not defective. What you are is different. You have a different processing system. We call it like being an Apple computer in an IBM world. 
And basically what you're doing is your processing system and your learning style and your ability uh, to be with other people is just different. So we have to learn, if everyone has, is speaking English and we speak Chinese, we have to learn to speak English to fit in. And then we can speak Chinese with each other all we want or online, but we have to learn to speak it in public, uh, English in public. And that's really what the problem 